Hello, welcome to the workshop. Today I want to make a start on a new project and this is it. This is not meant to be a recreation or a uh, replica of any specific historic racing car or whatever you might call this. This is just my vision of what I'd like it to look like. Of something you would have seen driving around Brooklyn or Indianapolis in the 1920s, 1930s. I've got a chassis. I have got a 1971 MG from which I'm going to take the engine, the gearbox, that sort of thing. Other than that, I'm just going to build it myself and make it up as I go along. I should point out, I have never built a car from scratch before. I do not know how to build bodywork and I'm not a professional mechanic, engineer, fabricator or anything like that. So um, yeah, wish me luck. The first thing I want to talk to you about is the chassis that I bought to build this car on. It's from a 1934 Armstrong Sidley Tourer and it's really ideal for the job. In fact, it's even more ideal than I thought it would be when I bought it. Uh, the main reason from a visual point of view is this. The chassis rails taper down to the front. They are about 100 centimetres apart at the back and 60 at the front. What this means is that the chassis will follow roughly the line of the bodywork, which I'm hoping will give it a, a more professional look, like the chassis was built for the body rather than the other way around. This should make it look a little bit more custom built and less like something that was built in a shed out of putts, which it is. The chassis also looks right from the side. I've done my best to draw it onto this uh, image here, but I've done a rather crude job of it. But you can see that the chassis rails have this elegant arch that goes over the rear axle. The beam then tapers down slowly towards the front where it meets with the curve of the front dumb irons. I think it's actually a very attractive piece of metal, if that's not a strange thing to say. There's also several mechanical reasons why I went for this chassis. It's the right wheelbase and it's the right length. But more important than that, it already has exactly the type of front suspension I want. I always wanted this car to have a forged underslung axle like cars generally did in this period. And on a vehicle like this, where the front axle and suspension are going to be completely on show, that sort of thing is more important than ever. This is the radiator grille, which I already have. And the seat here has to be wide enough for two rather cozy people to sit in. After that, it's going to taper down to a point at the back. I appreciate that people aren't going to be looking at the car from above, so this may not be relevant. I'd rather they didn't look at it from above because frankly, it looks like a rectal suppository. Another important aesthetic part of this car is going to be the front grille. Now, I want the front grille to be very upright and very narrow, very tall. When I bought the chassis, I did get the original grille. Unfortunately, it's a bit too chrome and shiny. It's also too low and too wide. I want something that looks a little bit more kind of industrial, a little bit more like something that you would have found on a homemade racing car in the 1920s, which is exactly what this is supposed to be. So what I found is this. It's a front grille and radiator from some sort of Austin from the 1930s. I'm not entirely sure which model. I think it's from an Austin 10 or a small van or truck. To be honest, it doesn't really matter. It's exactly the look I want. I like the shape of it, the height of it, the width of it. And more than that, I really like the condition of it. It's very imperfect. It has a great patina. It's quite rusty. And I'd like to preserve that. I'll most likely just wax it and just leave the rust on it. I like the look. As well as the chassis, I have bought a 1971 MGB. Uh, now, I went for this car for lots of practical reasons, just because the engine was the right sort of size and shape, but mainly because, frankly, it was all I could afford. And a car like this in period would have had some kind of big straight six, big straight eight, uh, you know, perhaps even an aero engine, but anything like that. And ideally, I'd like to have a Jaguar straight six in it. Uh, they're incredibly expensive. And to get a complete Jaguar XJ6 or old E-Type, something like that is thousands of pounds. Uh, so that was just out of the question. Whereas you can buy an MGB with a 1.8 litre four cylinder engine, you can buy it for a few hundred pounds and it comes with everything. Engine, gearbox, prop shafts, axle, wiring loom, gauges, it's all there and I can just cannibalise what I need and then get rid of the shell at the end. So I've got that, I've got the chassis, everything else I shall build as I go along. Now, although I'm going into this with slightly starry eyes, uh, I'm not completely devoid of experience. I did restore my Series 2 Land Rover in this workshop and I learned a lot from it. And I then went on to build some motorised kids toys, which also turned out really well. So doing those projects has given me a little bit of skills, a little bit of experience. Uh, but even so, this is a bit of a leap forwards. The first part of this build that I want to have a look at is the front suspension, uh, pretty much because it's the easy bit. And it's the easy bit for two reasons. Firstly, as I mentioned earlier, the front suspension is all going on completely unmodified. 
The second reason is that the previous owner had the chassis and a lot of the extra components shot blasted and rust treated and powder coated some years before I bought it. So there's an awful lot of components that don't need to be restored at all. Those that do, I shall clean up and de-rust as best I can. I'll paint those and then I can get everything assembled. How sexy does that look? Now, I would actually quite like to keep this finished because I think it looks brilliant, this pitted metal just cleaned up. Uh, unfortunately, if I leave it like this, it'll go rusty within about five minutes. So I shall stick to the plan and paint it. Before I get too carried away uh, putting the brakes together, I just want to show you the cables. These are they, and as you can see, they're not in great condition, but they are a lot better than they were. They did have this spiral covering all the way around the outside to protect the cable from the weather. Uh, I've had to take all that off, so that's going to need to be replaced with something weatherproof. But fear not, I have a plan. I've just used electrical heat shrink to protect the cable from the outside elements. This is quite flexible, it's essentially rubber, but I have found from other uses that it doesn't respond that well to exterior use. So I think there's probably a chance I may have to change this every, I don't know, five years or so, but that's not the end of the world. It's very easy to put on and the cables are very easy to remove. So now I can put the brakes together. This is one of two rods that make up the steering system. They also have these. This is one of four ball joints that make up the ends. They're adjustable. They just wind in on a little thread. As you can see, they're all in a bit of a state, so they all need a bit of attention, and these need cleaning up on the wire wheel.
So that is basically the front suspension up together. Now there is one important part I haven't done, which is the dampers, the shock absorbers. What I really want is a set of friction dampers, which are quite old technology, obviously, 100 years old, but because it's so old, they're very hard to find. So I'm just going to have to keep my ear to the ground and hope that a pair falls into my lap. Until then, I do just want to put the wheels on. Now, I'm not ready to put the wheels on because I haven't restored them and I don't have any tires, but I'm impatient and I just want to know what this car is going to look like. So I'm going to temporarily put the wheels on and purely for aesthetics sake, I'm going to put the grill on and build a wooden jig to hold it in roughly the right position. That way I can have a look at it, have a look at the heights and the proportions from the front and um, yeah, just see what the whole thing's going to look like. I'm too excited not to do it, frankly. Putting things like the grill on at this stage is obviously a bit silly, but uh, I think it looks great, the proportions are exactly what I want, um, and a lot of these things will have to change as I go on anyway, but this gives me a really good idea of what I'm working towards. That's all I'm going to do in this episode. In the next episode, I'm going to have a look at doing the rear suspension. I really hope you've enjoyed this today. So thanks very much for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. I think it looks the bollocks.